Oh, sheesh, y'all. Twice at least. Because today we're doing top 10 episodes of College Humor's biggest web series, Jake and Amir. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Not enough time. I was done. Not enough information then. I will say that Jake and Amir is my second most favorite web series on YouTube. With over 800 episodes of this series, you can imagine it was pretty difficult to do this list, but I finally crunched it down to 10, so without further ACHO, let's get right into this list. Number 10. Number 10 is Breakfast. In this episode, Amir got a little crazy at brunch that the day prior and has a buffet of breakfast foods at his table. Those are crepes? No, 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 these are blintzes. These are crepes, okay? I think I'm good. <laughs> Amir got a little crazy at brunch the day prior and ha now has a buffet of breakfast food at his desk. I jokingly said to the waitress yesterday at brunch, hey, one of everything, please. She starts giggling. There's a chemistry there, so I smile at her, but I grab her form and I go, hey, that wasn't a joke. I want one of everything, bitch. Having spent so much money on the bill, Amir tries to convince Jake to help him out with it. I finish all this food in three minutes or less, you pay me for it. If I don't, Okay, I'll pay you double of what I paid. Fine. I think what I love about this episode especially is just the insane story Amir tells of what exactly happened at brunch and how intense he gets with it. After every plate, she's like, are you sure you can afford all this stuff? Because, you know, you've seen me on Saturday nights. I'm dressed like a vagrant or whatever. But I go, hey, not only am I sure I'm going to pay you for all this stuff, but there's a tip in it for you. I start losing it. Number nine. Number nine is hotel room. Jake and Amir are at a hotel room, and Amir tries several different things to try to get spend some time with Jake. But Jake is not really interested in doing anything except, of course, belittle Amir. Who ate one of the batteries? Oh, here we go. It's story time. Hey, children, gather around. It's time for Jake to tell us a tall tale. Please, Jake, remind me what happened next. And if that doesn't convince you, then maybe Amir's elaborate prank calls will change your mind. Hey, room service, yes. Can I get two cheeseburgers, one with fries, one with salad, and can you take that entire order and shove it up your butt? That's right, go fuck yourself. You've just been punked by Ashton Kuchard. <laughs> I wouldn't eat your pig slop if you forced me to butt chug it. You know they can tell what room you're calling from. Them, right? Oh bullshit. Number eight. Number eight is airline scam. Amir tells Jake of how he likes to complain when he's whenever he takes a flight so he can get a free voucher for something and that uh, Jake is not impressed in the slightest. You're endangering people's jobs. Enda no, more than endangering. I've actually taken a pilot's wings before. I mean, he wasn't fired, as it were, but he was definitely forced into an early retirement. Jake explains to Amir that what he is doing is not morally okay and tries to avenge tries to convince him not to be so selfish. Dude, you're robbing airlines. Oh, they rob us. No, yeah. don't. No, Please. Have, you, have you seen these fares? They're gouging us. Don't turn this into some kind of noble cause, okay? You're incapable of having an idea that big. And not only that, but this episode has the most comedic fighting sequence you will ever see. <coughs> oh! Ah! Oh. Ah! I'm sorry. Ah! 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 Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Ah! <laughs> you are, you are so... Number seven. Number seven is Tinder. Now there's some episodes in this series where there a role reversal happens, and when that does happen, then Jake becomes the Amir of the episode. I'm swiping right. I matched on Tinder. She is 16. 16. 19. Now, I only wanted to pick one of these episodes for this list, and I went with this one. So we're clear, she's 16. 19. Now you got me saying it. <laughs> you said it first. With the help from Jake's Tinder coach, and after swiping for a month straight, Jake finally got one match. One single match. So he feels the need to brag about it to Amir. Her name is Lode. Lord? Lode. L-O-D. As in she has double Ds. It's French or some shit, and I'm going to French her tit. This episode has quite a few Jake and Amir classic tropes. Nonsensical rhyming and vomit. That's right, a topless pick for this thick dick makes the chicks uh, Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, Why? Sick! Holy shit! After looking over the girl's profile, Amir deducts that Jake's match is indeed a Tinder bot. All these photos are of different strippers. Meaning? Meaning this one's blonde, this one's a redhead, this one's Asian. Jake refuses to believe of what Amir said, only to be at the end of the episode that the Tinder bots stole 
Jake's dad's credit card information. She just wrote back, can't do tonight, cutie. What? I withdrew a thousand dollars from the account as a holding fee for next week. Oh. Yeah. No. Yes. No. What? Why no? And by the way, just just on a side note, if any of you out there or maybe somebody you know is maybe talking to a Tinderbot, then check out my video on my main channel, Five Ways to Spot a Tinderbot, and I'll help you figure it out if they are a bot or not. Number six. Number six is Interrogator Parts 1 and 2. What? Hey, diddly dee, it's Heather's life for us. How are you? How is everything? Comedian Ben Schwartz has this character on the Jake and Amir show where he'll just come in from time to time with a new occupation and is terrible at coming up with fake names. Perfectly normal name. What's your name? Carrot. That's a normal name for a food. Thank you, thank you. What's your last name? Slat. Carrot Slat? Carrot Slat. In this episode, he comes in as an interrogator and is looking for the person who pooped in the copier. Myself. Do you have frequent bowel movements? Frequent flyer mouths? Do you have frequent bowel movements? Oh, like, do I Do you take a lot of shits? Yes. At first, Carrot Slats plays a good cop, but in the second episode, he goes straight into bad cop. You think this is fucking funny? You grew a goatee? Shut the fuck up, okay? Did you? Take a shit in the copier. Carrot does not believe at all that Amir is the one who did it, but he is hell bent on proving that Jake is the true criminal here. I didn't shit in the Jake, did you take a shit in the copier? No. Ow! Can you, ow! Even if it means punching him and sucking his dick. That was illegal, man! That was illegal! Don't touch me. I didn't want that! I shit in the copier, okay? Stop beating me up, stop sucking me off! The two-parter ends with Slats admitting who was the one who shit in the copier? Because I shit in the copier. <gasps> Number five. <laughs> Number five is audition. Jake and Amir are auditioning girls for a sketch that Jake wrote for the College Humor. Oh wow, so I guess that's why they call it the blues. <laughs> that's great. All right, thank you very much, Liz. We're gonna definitely be in touch. Amir has taken it upon himself to tell every single girl that auditions that they got the part. Walk out right now with your head held high because you just want a goddamn beauty pageant and a talent show all in one. And then start laughing and saying how terrible their performance was as soon as they walk out of the room. Never. Holy shit, that was awful, right? <laughs> She's still close enough to- Next! Uh, what I find really great about this episode is how Amir finds a lot of different ways to praise girls on their acting. This is the last second of your life that you were in a goddamn A-list fucking Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Number four. Number four is Rolex. Jake. Amir. Call me Jake. <laughs> Absolutely not. Amir decides to surprise Jake with a gift, which just turns out to be a Rolex. You know how you're always like, uh, what time is it? <laughs> I've never said that to you before. Well, it's life. time for me to get you a new watch. Instead of being thankful for the gift like Amir assumed he would be, Jake just gets angered by it. You're an ass. Not you're an asshole. At that, I don't you want diva, this gift from you. You diva little. You're, I'm, I'm sorry. You're a shut cunt. up, dude. You just got cut in the office. I'm sorry. For Jake has had enough of his shenanigans and is just plain tired of Amir's obsession with him. What is this Manila folder? Sketches, photos, a Venn diagram. I mean, dude. This is psychotic. What? Amir cannot take all the honesty that Jake lays out on him, so he has no other choice but just to start crying tears of soy. Okay, happen. here we go. Cause look oh, at this. Oh yeah. my God, help us. I'm crying. He's crying soy. Tears of soy. Tears of soy. Oh, I'm beefing. I'm beefing soy. Number three. <sighs> Number three is movie date parts one and two. Jake is on a date, but not only to be interrupted by Amir, but also by two very special guests. <laughs> Ben Schwartz's character returns, this time as a movie usher. What I can tell you is I have a very ordinary name, much like everybody else in the world. What is it? You want to know my name? Yep. Right now? Yes. Sulu Candles. Sulu Candles. Ooh, what a dunk it! Sulu Candles also presents the director of the movie they're about to watch, who is none other than Thomas Middleditch's character, Amir's longtime rival, Doobs. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the sensational Mr. Penis Scarlett Johansson Anal. 
Good luck making fun of that, a squeerge. No. Yes. Sorry, ScarJo. Curse you! Tubes is still angry with Amir for turning down a part in his movie that he had for lined up for Amir. The script was poor. Well, now I'm filthy stinking rich when this thing gets released to the public, and I hope it bites you on your filthy little ass. These two episodes are just way over the top and comedically with brilliant performances by everybody. Good luck making fun of that, a sneer. Looks like you stumped me, Bobby. Whoa! Curse you! Well done. What the fuck did I just watch? Also, these four guys make it obvious that they love working with each other and just are just fantastic at playing off of each other. Ma'am, what's your name? Julia. Franklin, let me ask you this. Wrong. Do you want to get with a hero, a zero, or a gyro? Oh my god. No, it's pronounced hero still. The two-parter ends with Dubes proposing to Jake's date, who accepts it, and then Sulu Candles just throws candy all over everybody. I'm gonna give you so many babies. I'm gonna hit it. And every time I hit it, I'm gonna think of Amir. No, I don't think that's the insult that you want it to be. Yes, it is. <laughs> Number two. Number two is costumes two. In this episode, Halloween is just around the corner and Amir needs Jake's help with which costume he should go with this year. I have a dream! It's a Ben Franklin costume. What? Man. No, I thought this was George W. You crammed so much wrong into so few words. Thank you. From Psy to Zombie to Blackface, Amir comes up with terrible costumes. No! Are you insane? Go home! Take that costume off right now! You're gonna get shot! Jesus! Yes! Jesus! Exactly! Wipe it off! Shower! And there are three costume episodes, but I went with the second one because it's my favorite, and I just... I love it. It has great re replayability. So this one kind of works as like a two-person costume. How? Skeleton guy and uh, whatever the hell you want to wear. <laughs> How is that a two-person costume? Oh my god, you're calling me out on all my bullshit today. And I love you for it! <laughs> what are you, on your period or something? You know, your crotch is bleeding. Ah, oh, shit. Number one. <sighs> and finally, the number one Jake and Mir episode of all time is Couch for Sale. Jake, can you get that? No. Oh, thank you. Ass! So Amir posts a fake ad on Craigslist of having a couch for sale just so that when people call and ask about it, he can just hear their disappointed voices when he tells them it's not real. I don't know if that makes me weird or whatever. Weird? It makes you borderline psychotic. I had to make this the number one pick for a few different reasons. It has the clearest beginning, middle, and end. Uh, the jokes land right where they need to, and on top of it all, Amir just washing a bowl in a bucket as all of this unfolds is, is just... Fantastic. Oh, your daughter's going away to college and she really needs a good couch? <laughs> That's really sweet. Watch this. Unfortunately, the couch is unavailable. Yes, it is because of how you answer the question. <laughs> no, no, I'm not being cute with you. Uh, you really, you disappointed your daughter on this one. Also, this is a very clear representation of their characters throughout the eight years that this show went on. What it came down to is that if I were about to show somebody this uh, series, I would show them this episode first, just because I think this is how you get into it with this episode. It's one of the first ones I've seen, although it's not the first. I remember the first one I saw was Bus, which was a contender, but didn't make the list. Sorry, it, it, it was tough. It was legitimately tough. Mickey, my friend. Jesus. You're at my apartment, Mickey, right? All right, you rented a U-Haul, Mickey, the biggest one. You got past my doorman, Mickey. You found the key that I left under the floor mat, Mickey. Okay, open the front door to my apartment, Mickey, and you'll find a tastefully distressed, beautifully restored, Danish modern touch of class for your ass. There is no couch, Mickey. <laughs> it was all a mind game, Mickey. And thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. There are so many episodes, so if you guys want me to do another Jake and Amir list, I could do my top 11 through 20, but only if you guys want it, or if I feel like making it. I don't know. We'll, we'll see who makes the first call here. We'll see. We'll just see. It's a, it's a game of chess, I like to say. Oh, I'm sorry. No. This is, this is too salty. Huge thank you to Jake Horowitz and Amir Blumenfeld for making this series and just being a huge inspiration for me when I'm like writing comedy. Make sure to check out their podcast, If I Were You, and their Vimeo series, Lonely and Horny. Well, that's it for me, guys. Bye for now.